Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Senior Editor Tom Wright and today I'm delighted to be joined by John from Ascente. How's it going, John? Very good, thank you, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you. And we're going to be talking about hybrid work today and how to get workplaces ready for that. But to start with, could you give us a quick overview of Ascente, please, and where it is you operate? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Ascente is a trade-only distributor of innovative, but we believe essential workplace solutions. Um, all of our solutions tackle uh, a lot of the different challenges associated with hybrid working. Um, and from our perspective, although the world's obviously changed dramatically due to COVID in the last nearly two years now, um, sadly, um, but uh, we were looking at a lot of these trends um, that have been highlighted by COVID um, before the pandemic occurred. So uh, very much based around hybrid and flexible working. I'm delighted to be here today to discuss Max Hub's LED products, um, which we are the exclusive distributor for. Yeah, so it's still a, a busy and disruptive time for businesses as they're getting ready for hybrid work and maybe looking a bit more at remote working again for a period of time. Could you talk through some of the challenges that they're facing at the moment in terms of getting their workplaces ready? Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, it's a, a huge topic and probably the number one topic on everyone's uh, lips and minds at the moment. Um, but, um, yeah, I think what COVID and, and the pandemic have created is a baseline um, for the majority of businesses where um, they have implemented, if they didn't have it in place before, uh, UC platforms and um, also the ability to interact with their data, um, whether that's you know databases or, or document storage. Um, you know, all of those kind of uh, fundamental uh, basics have been put in place now by everybody just to support flexible and, and uh, remote working. <clears throat> now the challenge comes though, where on, on the sort of medium to long term um, with this working model of hybrid, um, the majority of businesses uh, we don't believe were, were set up uh, for this before the pandemic. Um, and we, we certainly don't see that many who are genuinely saying they're ready um, for the challenges that hybrid work creates um, on a long term basis. Um, the interesting thing is that the data uh, that we see in the market, you know, all kinds of different market research that's taking place clearly shows a, a, an employee preference for continuing to stay flexible and, and uh, maintaining the choice of um, whether or not people come into an office or work from home. Um, we really don't see that uh, being something that's going to disappear. I know there are a few uh, people who've sort of you know, said, well, once this is all over, um, you know, we're always going to go back to how we were, aren't we? And you know, I genuinely don't think that that's the reality. Um, and, you know, this latest strain of COVID uh, is highlighting that to us all once again. So, you know, I think from a work from home perspective, um, the key topic that, that I see a lot of um, opportunity and, and need for um, people to really focus on it is this concept of visual collaboration. Um, where if you're, you're still sitting at home or, or working from home regularly, um, as people start returning to the workplace, you're going to want to see you know, what, what they're writing on or, or what people are collaborating on uh, within a meeting room environment. And there's all kinds of different tools that you can use to tackle that problem. When it comes to offices, um, I think there's a, a lot of much broader and wider topics. Um, but the phrase that, that I'm personally focused on at the moment is digital equality. Um, and I like that phrase because it, it begins to highlight the challenge of how you create this hybrid world with you know, a, a percentage anywhere from you know, 10 or 20 percent up to 50 or 80 percent of people um, being working, uh, working from home or working remotely um, in each meeting. Um, that's going to create a lot of challenge for businesses to try to um, have that experience where the employees feel connected uh, both um, those who are in the room and those who are remote as well. Um, as a business, we're looking at this in, in relation to um, how we can improve the quality of audio and video um, within the room itself, um, because we see those as, as kind of, again, fundamental baseline challenges. Um, but today we're focused on talking about MaxHub um, and specifically the need for much more immersive video conferencing taking place. Um, 
the majority of meeting rooms that have video in them will obviously have screens, um, but a lot of those screens um, are quite small often um, and designed um, to primarily support the people um, being in the room for more ad hoc uh, conferences, whereas with the amount of video conferences and the amount of people that are likely to be online, um, those uh, talking heads, as I call them, will get smaller and smaller um, on small video conferencing screens. Um, and I suppose the final point I just make is, is, is the need for uh, businesses to really focus on the total experience they're offering their employees to encourage them to come into the office. Um, in a previous conversation of this nature, I, I alluded to the term five star hotel experiences and certainly the need for businesses to really look at how they can double down and invest in their workplaces to enhance the quality of that experience that's being offered in, in the office to hopefully elevate itself above what you can do when you're at home. Um, you know, and at the moment, I'm at home, as you can see, recording this with you. And I'm, you know, a few centimetres away from talking to you and uh, on on this call. So, you know, that experience is is there already, um, and therefore businesses face a big challenge of trying to uh, create a, an experience in their offices which which is better than than what we're doing now. Okay, let's look um, specifically at Microsoft Teams now, which has obviously seen huge growth over the past two years or so. What are you hearing from Microsoft with regards to hybrid work and how is that complemented by Max Hub's technology? Yeah, well, so Microsoft um, <clears throat> have obviously produced lots of uh, content and, and uh, data, but they specifically released a white paper um, around the general challenges of hybrid working, which we've taken a really good look at. Um, and it, within that uh, white paper, it specifically highlights this need for immersive video conferencing to take place within meeting rooms. And it actually gives examples of the types of setups that um, uh, can be created within meeting spaces um, in order to try to create much more immersive video. But the first thing is it, it highlights just the need for bigger screens and greater real estate um, um, where the screen becomes really dominant within the space, which means that um, the people who are, who are at the other end of the call um, we're obviously going to be much bigger on the screen, um, feel much more connected, we hope, to the actual experience. And that's what Microsoft themselves highlight. Uh, Microsoft also announced uh, around the time of this uh, white paper being released um, their new front row feature, which is now coming into uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, and this is a specific uh, tool for use within meeting rooms to uh, connect uh, not just the remote participants, but also screen sharing uh, actions that are being captured. Um, I know that UC Today have uh, written an article specifically about um, front row. So your readers can uh, go and have a look at that, I'm sure. Um, this need to, to, to focus on you know, this phrase digital equality again, the, the, the connectivity between the in-room participants and the remote participants is, is kind of paramount to what Microsoft are highlighting. And that goes into you know, the position of the camera, um, the, the microphone technology. Um, but of course, it's not just Microsoft that are highlighting all of this. I mean, as I said earlier in this call, you know, this is the number one topic for the majority of um, businesses who are in the UC space. Um, and so that, that whole need to really improve the quality of the experience that employees get um, is coming out quite strongly. Um, and it, it, the difficulty is that the businesses will, will inevitably say, well, where do I start with this? And um, um, you know, we'll come on to talk about that in a moment, I'm sure. But you know, certainly um, that white paper from Microsoft gives some really good uh, guidance for people to look at uh, and designing spaces which are appropriate to the number of people that are in the meeting, uh, the size of the space, um, and ultimately the task that people are being asked to perform as well. Yeah, I mean, so we've covered a lot in just a few minutes. So there's clearly a lot for businesses to think about. And as you mentioned just then, if the businesses are looking to take their first steps towards evolving their meeting spaces, what should they be looking at to begin with? 
Well, I mean, it's difficult to be too prescriptive with a question like that. But um, you know, as a general kind of statement, I would say to try to take an agile mentality to this. Um, and for those who don't know what I mean by that, the principle of agile um, is that you create something you know, to a good standard, the best possible standard that you can. Um, but people within the agile world call it an MVP, minimum viable product. Um, and you know whether that's one office, uh, one floor of an office, or one meeting room. You know it could be something as as simple as one single space. Um, but our, our uh, approach and recommendation would be start somewhere. Um, and you know you don't have to do your entire estate. You don't have to transform your entire business. But um, put a lot of thought into starting with uh, one uh, floor office um, meeting room. Um, and think about how you can create an experience which really um, increases the quality um, of what your employees in the room and also hopefully your remote participants are going to uh, gain when they're in that space. Um, obviously, from our point of view, we'd encourage you to look at the immersive uh, qualities that you can get with uh, using products such as MaxHub within um, a space of that nature. <clears throat> Again, we're hearing quite a lot of people because of things like ongoing concerns with COVID wanting to, to kit out spaces which are probably larger than, than you know, a run rate meeting room to accommodate lots of different styles of meetings, um, you know, whether it's a large group meeting, a town hall session, um, an internal conference. You know, but again, that one space, you, you can spend a bit more trying to create an improved experience. Um, and you know, make sure that you, you, you track feedback from the people that use that space and then use that feedback to iterate um, you know, and understand what's, what's worked well for you, but also what you could improve. Uh, and then I would say that's the point when you need to start committing to um, a longer term kind of rollout. Um, just on that note, um, there's a lot of people that I speak to who are unaware of the support that the government is providing businesses to help um, them get started with these types of investments. So um, it was announced in March of this year that um, they're introducing a super uh, tax deduction from corporation tax to help businesses make investments. And the, the actual announcement was focused around um, things like uh, uh, plant machinery for factories. But this can include things like meeting room technology. And we, we've checked into that. Um, so there's definitely additional financial support that is available from the government um, Wait, that you can claim back. Um, and then my final message would be, whatever you do, ensure that you try to track the data. Um, and what I mean by that is that we have solutions that can help with uh, tracking things like total occupancy of your building, total occupancy of your meeting rooms, and then even looking into things like people counting um, for you know, understanding the average number of people in a space. Um, this data is gonna be critical in order for businesses to really start to gain a footprint um, of what's going on with it within my business, my building, my office, my meeting room, um, so that they can start to iterate um, a, a, and have a longer term kind of roadmap for investment. OK, John, there were some great tips in there. Thanks so much for your time. It's been great to have you. No problem. Thank you very much, Tom. And thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.